we're going to turn to worshiping through God's word here at this moment. And so uh, we're, we, were, we are uh, in the book of Romans, if you want to turn there in your Bibles or Bible apps. And uh, today will be our last sermon in the Romans sermon series here for some time until Easter, if you will. Where we're finishing up Romans chapter 8, and then we'll come back to the book of Romans here after Easter. We've got a few different sermon series uh, down the pike here. We're going to again turn into Advent season, and we have a series through uh, the first chapter of John. Uh, we're going to walk through that through the Advent season. We've got uh, several different series in the new year, Dark Night of the Soul, Hospitality, Welcoming the Stranger, and, uh, and Love Is, Walking Through 1 Corinthians 13, and uh, each of the expressions of love as we walk into uh, um, the Easter season. And so I uh, look forward to some of those mini-series down the road here. But uh, we're finishing up the book of Romans, or not the book of Romans, but are uh, taking a break here essentially after this week. And we're going to be in Romans chapter 8, uh, verses 31 through 39. One of my all-time favorite movies tells probably one of those epic stories of love, and uh, uh, um, it's a it, it's an infamous movie. It's timeless. Many of you shaking your head, chuckling even. Uh, the Princess Bride. How many how many of you have seen The Princess Bride? Many many of you have. It is a great great movie. I highly encourage you to check it out. It's a great family movie. There, and it's a great story of love. As you wish. As you wish. It starts off with uh, a story of, of Wesley and Buttercup. And Wesley's just merely a farm boy. But he loves Buttercup deeply. And he serves her well. And, and, and he uses this expression. Whenever she asks of anything, she says, as you wish. And over time, Buttercup comes to know that that phrase actually means, I love you. I love you. Eventually, they wed but not for long. They're not together for, for so long where he has to go off. And going off, she hears word that, that his vessel was taken by the dread pirate Roberts. And he may even possibly be killed. That's what she hears. Is that she, he is dead. Well, the wicked prince Humperdinck snatches up the opportunity to make her his bride. And so he, he betroths her to himself, chooses her to be his bride. In the absence of Wesley, Buttercup concedes. Christ, our king, our, our bridegroom, if you will, right, is, is no longer with us. And, in, and, and while he's away, he's told us he's coming back, but while he's away, there, there's, there's temptations, there's trials, there's pressures in our lives that cause our love for him to be affected. The pressures of this life, the hardships, the suffering, the difficulties, spiritual forces even at work seek to separate us from the love of God. We see the fickleness of our own humanity come out in our relationships, even in marriages, that merely end because we just aren't compatible. It's just not working out. Friendships end and we move on. We break apart. The fickleness of the human heart to stay committed and to remain faithful to each other, let alone even God himself. We feel that pressure in his absence and even wonder about his existence altogether. Right? How do we remain faithful to our bridegroom, to Christ himself, to the very end? How do we remain faithful? How can we be sure that we will be with him in the end? Knowing how fickle we are in our sinfulness and our self-centeredness. Our, pas our, our passage today hits this point squarely. So let's turn there to God's word. Romans 8, verses 31 through 39. Our focus here today will be verses 35 through 39, but I want us to read the context. As always, it's important to read context to discern God's truth here. 
What then shall we say to these things? Speaking of the verses prior there. If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. How will he not also graciously give us all things? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? Christ Jesus is the one who died. More than that, who was raised, who's at the right hand of God, who's indeed interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we're being killed all day long. We're regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God. In Christ Jesus, our Let's pray, friends. Holy Spirit, this passage is just, is, is just so rich with glorious and inspiring and encouraging truth. <laughs> Lord, as we, as we walk through it, Lord, may, may, may you connect the depth of our hearts and, and the struggle, Lord Jesus, with the confident truth, the, the secure truth, Lord God, that that nothing can separate us from your love. Holy Spirit, meet us right where we're at. For some of us in the struggles that we're already in, God, meet us right where we're at to prepare us, Lord God, for coming struggles and challenges and questions and doubts in our life. Holy Spirit, fill me. Fill me with your presence. Fill me with your spirit. Anoint me, Lord as your servant to declare your truth and not mine. Take this weak and frail human body, soul and mind, Lord God. Have your way. Change me. In your name we pray. Amen. To begin... Paul starts off this section. It's, it's important for us to start off in verse 31 here, looking at there, what shall we say to these things? Again, what are we looking back to? It's this glorious truth, this amazing truth that, that, that God has done all the work to save us, that he saw us before time, and he made a way possible through Jesus Christ that we could come to God the Father, knowing that when he created us, we would rebel, we would run away. And before time even, he and the Son and the Spirit had a plan to bring us back to himself. And so he's called to us as we grow through this life. He calls his Spirit, works in our hearts. And, and those of you who've come, you've, you've learned to recognize that call that you didn't come to Jesus on your own. That there was something working in you, drawing you. God is pursuing you. Some of you may be right there right now. You haven't surrendered yet fully to him. But you can sense the Spirit is tugging and working in you to come. God drawing you to himself. God has done, made all things possible for us to come to himself by Jesus Christ, paying our penalty for our sin that we deserve. We're all headed to hell. All of us. But Jesus has done all the work for us to make it possible. And then when we, when we surrender, you see, God's pursuing us through Jesus, with his arms open wide in that bloody embrace, no matter what we've done, no matter how bad our life has been, no matter what's been done to us, he's pursuing each of us. He loves us. And when we stop and we say, Lord, I give up. I'm going to stop living for me. I give up. We let him catch us. We let him embrace us. We let him take us and make us his own. And we surrender and say, you're my king. You're my king. It's all about you, not about me anymore. Cleanse me, save me. 
scriptures here say, verse 30, that those he called, he justified. He made us right, but then those he justified, he glorified. It's a done deal. The future is already secure. So Paul is saying, in light of these things, what are we to say to these things in verse 31? And there's these questions, these remaining questions in, in, the, in the readers, in the hearers, the Christians in Rome at that time, and even in us today, these questions that arise in us of maybe somebody can still do something to take this away from me. Maybe somebody, something in this life can affect my faith, can, can, can take me out of the Father's hands. Maybe there's something that can diminish God's gift, that he won't be able to give me all good things. Maybe I, I'll still come before God in the end, and, I, and, and, and I'll still be judged and found guilty. And last week we walked through all of those, all of those questions are gloriously answered that God is for us. God will give us all things. God is the judge. Jesus is our defense. And we look to Jesus, not to us, to judge us. And he says, you're forgiven. You're my son and you're my daughter. And finally, the final question, summing all this up is, is but who, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? That sense of security, that, 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 that loving relationship that we have with Christ is still frail. is still insecure. That it could still break down. That maybe we might fail. So Paul goes into explaining. Shall tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, all these things here for our first point, that suffering causes us to doubt. God's love for us and our love for God. Paul knows in the life of those believers there that, that our circumstances, the, the pain of this life, the suffering of this life, it, it, the pressures affect our sense of our grip on God, don't they? It causes us to doubt our own love for God. They cause us to doubt even God's existence, God's love for us. How can God be good? Allow all these painful things to happen. And so he walks through here, just, just trying to hit them all as he hits on tribulation and distress, just in general, all the things, the trials and difficulties that, that make life hard. Reminding us, as we've said through this series here, this life is not your best life now if you know Jesus Christ. If you don't, friends, this is as good as it gets because it's going to be hell for eternity. This is not the best life for us in Christ. There will be trial and distress. Even for us who follow Jesus, there will be persecution, as Pastor Friday pointed out, as we observed this morning, all around the world, people are paying the price. Their families are being beaten. The women are being raped. Children are being sold into slavery. Threats to their life, killed even, tortured. It's real. There is cost. To follow Jesus. What about famine or nakedness? Poverty. Jesus said in Matthew 6 that don't worry about all the, the, the basic necessities of life. God's, God is your father. He'll take care of these things. Even you need for clothing. Well, if Jesus said that, then my experience of poverty and, and struggle, well, that might make, that, that seems to make that, that seem untrue, that he, he isn't that good. He isn't providing. He isn't caring for me. Can I trust him? Dangerous or ultimately death. These experiences in this life these pressures as, as we experience them, the hardship, the pain, feels like it, it loosens the, the grip of our, our, our fingers and our faith on God. And, 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 and we find ourselves wondering and asking questions that, 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 that make us insecure in our own soul. And we wonder and we have this dissonance of this, God, is God there? Do I have, am I losing my faith? Is this... 
this insecurity begins to settle in. This is real, right? This may affect us and hit us in different ways and points. I know when Jane and I were facing our second miscarriage, and the likelihood of our, for ourselves that knowing that once we found out we were pregnant, it hit me. I, it's likely that we might lose this one as well. And, 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 and wrestling with why. We've been wanting a child for so long. This is such a good thing. And, and all these things about who God is and, 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 and begin to come into question your wonderment. Fast forward down the road here, even to today. This season here in, in, in the Worthington area, it's been a hard season, right? So many children have died. It's near to home. So many people have been taken, parents, loved ones. And the death just seems to be mounting. And it's heavy and it feels like so hard. And you just, you begin to kind of wonder, what's going on? How long? And we feel insecure. Is this thing between us and God, is this gonna, are we gonna make it? Are we, are, are we gonna turn to ourselves, living for ourselves because that's that survival response? Are we gonna abandon, are we gonna lose faith? Is God gonna be faithful? Maybe he's not. As it is written, verse 36, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We were regarded like sheep led to slaughter. The reality of this life is it's filled and riddled with death and decay. We will experience pain. Jesus said you will experience trouble and hardship and heartache, but take heart. I've overcome this world. We weren't promised this is the best life now. We weren't promised that it wasn't going to be hard. But we were given promises that we would be changed and that our eternity would be guaranteed. Verse 38 and 39, Paul goes on to explain that God's love for you is greater than any power in the universe. He says through these great words, No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I'm sure that neither death nor life, angels nor rulers, or in some translation that's demons, things present or things to come, powers, heights, or depth, anything in all creation. He covers the entire gamut. There is no force or power in this world that can snatch you out of God's hands and his embrace. But we feel it, don't we? we're talking about in death that fear that death can take things from us that are good things in this life that do we really know that there's something beyond that 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 in, in life now the trials and difficulties threaten us there could be spiritual forces and powers that are even greater than us a spiritual warfare that we sense and feel at times can it possibly take us what about things that haven't come yet Things, things in the future that we don't know what's going to happen. We don't even know what decisions we'll make. How, do we, how are we supposed to feel secure? But he clearly states here, no, it doesn't matter what force or power it is in all creation. Nothing can separate you, can pry you out of the grace and the grip of our God. And the Princess Bride, Wesley and Buttercup has had this encounter after Wesley comes to rescue, if you will, Buttercup from the, the arms of uh, 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 the Sicilian, I forget his name now, he says, inconceivable. And, and they have been sent off to kid kidnap Buttercup and then have her killed, essentially. And, and, and Wesley, who looks like the Dread Pirate Roberts, comes and rescues her from the kidnappers. And he's revealed to be her true love, her Wesley. And she pushes him down a hill. 
And he says, as you wish, as he falls down the hill. And so she dives down the hill, and now she's tumbling down the hill. And they end up in each other's embrace. And, and, and Wesley says this to her, I told you I would always come for you. Why didn't you wait for me? He says, well, you were dead. <laughs> Death cannot stop true love. All it can do is delay it for a while. Death cannot stop true love. The, the powers of this world cannot stop true love. Your pain and your suffering cannot stop true love. The love of Christ at work in your life. John Stott says this. Nothing seems stable in our world any longer. Insecurity. You can go to the next slide, please. Insecurity is written across all human experience. Christian people are not guaranteed immunity to temptation, tribulation, or tragedy. But we are promised victory. God's pledge is not that suffering will never afflict us, but that it will never separate us from his love. And so we have this declaration, these, these great words here, in all things we are more than conquerors. These words are so good, friends. Let, let's, let's unpack this like a, a Christmas present that we've been long awaiting for. More than conquerors. We are more than conquerors because of God's love for us, not our love for him. You see, if you notice all of these expressions, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? And all these things, we're more than conquerors through him who loved us. Nothing in all creation is able to separate us from the love of God. It's not talking about our love. Once God's got a grip on us, friends... God's love will never let you go. We are more than conquerors through him who loved us. This phrase, more than conquerors, is, is such a, a cool phrase. You see, it could say just we are conquerors through Jesus. But it, Paul uses an, a very unusual, a very rare word here to mean we are super duper uber schmooper conqueror, conquerors. Wow. We are hyper conquerors. We are super conquerors. What, what he's saying here is that as if we, a, a warrior in battle, an army, that they, they, they go to battle and they fight and they fight and they fight and, they, and it is a hard fought battle. Many casualties. Many people die. And those who remain in there victorious, they win the battle. But they may have legs that need to be amputated, other body parts missing, huge wounds and scars, PTSD, that they, they won. But the rest of life is a struggle. It's a victory. They won. But there's pain and there's suffering yet to follow. What Paul is getting at here is, no, we, we, we won't just get through this life, maybe even have our lives taken, only to limp into the next and through the next. No, no, he said, on the other side, no matter what we experience in this life, even when death takes us, glory, glory is ahead of us. We have new bodies coming where there's no pain, where there's no sorrow, there's no death. There's only joy eternity, only eternity of pleasure, of peace, of life. We don't just make it and overcome, but we are gloriously victorious. And Paul uses the word here, we are more than conquerors. Not we will be. This is key. We are more than conquerors. That's a present continuous action. That means it's real for us now. That, that, that nothing now can take that sense of glory awaits me. Glory secured for me now. It's not, it's not a possibility. No matter what I experience now, Paul can say, nothing compares to the weight of glory that is now yours. Nothing. 
nothing in all creation as a result can separate us from the love of God. And that includes ourself. That includes us. Because even in our sinfulness and our choices to choose ourselves over God, and we may even stray, and we wonder how, God, I, I've been living more for myself in this way, or I didn't remain faithful, I crumbled under pressure, am I still secure? The security of these promises are not about our faithfulness to God, but God's faithfulness to us. God brought us to himself, and, and, and once we let us catch it, let him catch us, nothing can take us out of his embrace. We didn't bring ourselves to God. We didn't earn our way to God. God has done all the work for us. Our confidence is not in our love for him. As, as Tim, Tim Keller says this, Paul's main point is that we must face life, not only troubles, but even our own sin with a towering, infallible confidence. The almighty God of the universe has purposed to make us perfectly holy and gloriously happy. And literally nothing can thwart God's purpose for us. Do you hear that truth? Nothing can thwart God's purpose for you. But this is only true, friends. If we have let the Father catch us, if we have fallen to our knees and said, I surrender and given up ourselves to the King, to let Him save us, to let Him be our King. You see, people who are still in the flesh, who hear this, translate this message into, not, I can do whatever I want. God's love for me is so big. It doesn't matter what my life is like. It doesn't matter what my choices are. And, and this sense of, of, of his promises to us become a sense of license and entitlement to his grace. That's not true. You see, if the spirit of God is in you, this glorious truth causes you, when you hear this, when, it, when you're gripped by it, it causes you, I want to give the Father more. I want to give the Father everything. As the psalmist says, your love is better than my life. Those of us who have the Spirit hear these truths and respond with, I want to obey. I want to give to you because I'm secure. That means nothing can be taken from me. No matter how bad it gets, nothing can be taken from me. For those of us who have the Spirit, this is, these words are, are security, especially for those of us who, who have grown up not having the security of knowing that love is there. That maybe it was based on our performance or our works, and it's like this precious gem to come back to, and, and we, we fall into the trap of, 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 of our identity being attached to, to what we do, and, and I failed again, and I'm not good enough, the Father doesn't love me, and we come back and, no, nothing can separate. Oh, and it's so good. I think of when I bought Jane's engagement ring and, and, and all the work I went to, to to find and I searched and, and I, I learned so much about diamonds to select and find the best diamond I could get with my pennies that I had. And and, and when I got it and, and had it set in the ring and 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 just like it was so precious. That's the, that's the most Exactly, Miriam. It was beautiful. Every girl likes a diamond on their finger. That's right. And I brought that home, and, and just like, it was the most expensive thing I'd ever bought in my entire life. And going back and looking at it, it's just, it, for me, it was just beautiful. It was glorious. Like, and I couldn't wait to get it to Jane. I keep going back to make sure it's there in that drawer. And I keep going back. Is it there? It's really there. This is really happening. I keep going back to it. And, and for those of us, so we're insecure. We have this insecurity in ourselves, in our sense of identity. These truths we can keep coming back to. And you know what? It's still there. The truth hasn't changed. And it's so good every time. Nothing can separate us from his love. Nothing. And it secures us. It compels us. 
It motivates us, no matter what we're going through. Glory. Jesus. He is all mine. I'm all his. Near the conclusion of uh, The Princess Bride, Buttercup is, is uh, threatened by Humperdinck as she calls him out for all his lies. Calls him out. She, he warns her, beware of, 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 of the consequences that will come and what harm I can do to you. She says, you can't hurt me. Wesley and I are joined by the bonds of love, and you cannot track that, not with a thousand bloodhounds. You cannot break it, not with a thousand swords. All right, The Princess Bride is this sweet, sappy fairy tale of a story, right? Amen. But it proclaims the truth of true love that is in Christ. And, and how good these words are. Jesus is coming for you. The bridegroom is coming. And nothing, nothing can separate you from that love. He's coming. Let's pray. Will the worship team come on? Holy Spirit. These truths are meant to catch us, Father. To catch us in your embrace. To wake us up, to recognize it's not the strength of our grip on you, but, but the secure and unrelenting grip of your grace, of your love for us. Lord, I pray for those who are present here who recognize they have not had the security of this love. They keep wrestling. They keep trying to look at themselves to find security. But God, they recognize there is no security there. We pray, Jesus. I pray with my friends who are right there. Recognize I want the security. Lord Jesus, help them surrender and come to you now. And declare, I want you to be my king, Jesus. I want this security of your love for myself that comes with you being my king. I surrender. Save me from my sin. Save me from myself. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, for those of us who needed to be reminded of these powerful, glorious truths, Lord, who needed to be infused with courage, Lord, to stand and declare, to share the hope with the world. Love never fails. We know true love. You can have this security too. We declare it. Lord, and maybe there's sacrifices in some, some lives right now that people are holding on to, the little things for themselves, Lord, that they don't believe that, that you have good things for them, Lord, and you are touching right now. My love is good. My love is secure. My love will never let you go. I have glory for you. Let go of those little things. I just I, I lift up those friends right now as they wrestle with those things. And you're calling them to sacrifice and obedience for you. God, let us be captivated. Let us be swept away today by your love. In your name we pray. Amen. <coughs>
mercies for me every day. Your love never fails. Friends, as we uh, go out into the mission field today, may we go out with the confidence knowing that we are more than conquerors through the love of Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. Y'all have a blessed day. Hallelujah.